Bonjour and welcome to French 1 with Mr. McCoy. This is lesson 41, dedicated to two useful verbs, the regular ER verb jouer and the irregular verb faire. Our learning objectives for this lesson are for you to be able to produce uh, the correct forms of these verbs, that means uh, to conjugate them in the present tense, um, both in speech and in writing, and also for you to be able to recognize these, these verbs if you see them in a, in a reading or when they're uh, spoken to you as when you hear them. And again, uh, our focus, or one of our focuses for this unit, is going to be uh, discussing our our hobbies, our pastimes, and the sports that we play. We're going to see that these two verbs um, are very useful um, in discussing those topics. But again, we're not going to see all that right now. I just want to show you in this lesson how you conjugate these two verbs in the present tense. So here we go. Now if I told you as I just did, that jouer is a regular ER verb, would you be able, before I show it to you, to conjugate this, for example, on a sheet of paper? Would you produce the different forms? I hope you would. I'm confident that you guys could do that. But again, uh, the verb jouer means to play, and here are the forms. So again, listen once, I'll repeat them again, and you can repeat them after me. So real quick, we have the infinitive, jouer, Je joue, tu joues, il joue, elle joue, on joue, nous jouons, vous jouez, il joue, elle joue. Again, repeat after me this time. Répétez après moi. Jouer, je joue, tu joues, il joue, elle joue. On joue. Nous jouons. Vous jouez. Il joue. Elle joue. Again, that never means to play. And again, we'll see shortly uh, the way you can use this to talk about the sports that you like to play. Now continuing, um, the second verb might not be as easy, but again, you guys can handle this with a little bit of practice. This is an irregular verb. Do you remember a couple other irregular verbs that we've already encountered in this course? Can you name them? I hope you remember you've already learned the irregular verbs avoir and être. Avoir and être. So this is going to be a third irregular French verb. Again, this is a, we're going to be using this to talk about a couple of sports, but a lot of hobbies and pastimes. So a lot of other activities in French beyond the scope of that. Um, but again, trust me when I tell you this is a very useful and often used verb in French. Okay, it means to do or to make. To do or to make. Yeah. The infinitive faire, je fais, tu fais, il fait, elle fait. On fait, nous faisons, vous faites, ils font, elles font. Again, this time, cette fois, répétez après moi, s'il vous plaît. Répétez après moi. L'infinitif, faire. Je fais, tu fais, il fait, elle fait. On fait, nous faisons, vous faites, ils font, elles font. I want to point out, it's kind of a, an irregularity here. Notice we have the, in the new form, faisons. Don't pronounce that A-I like you pronounce it elsewhere. Usually A and I in French makes an E eh sound. Or it can also be nasalized. Usually it makes an E eh sound. But here, in the new form of this verb, you pronounce F. Nous faisons. Nous faisons. Okay, that's just kind of something I keep in mind, okay? So again, real quick, repeat after me. Faire. Je fais. Tu fais. Il fait. Elle fait. On fait, nous faisons, 
Vous faites, ils font, elles font. Now let me recommend or encourage you to get those two forms on flashcards. And if you do well drilling those on the flashcards, again, please um, spend some time to get those get those learned. Okay. Um, I will say at this point, it may be a little more helpful for some of you to write some meaningful sentences using those verbs and those different forms. Um, so actually wait um, till I show you the, the, the sports and the hobbies and pastimes. It's going to be an upcoming lesson. I'll let you wait and maybe it'll be a little more easier to write uh, meaningful sentences, full sentences, with those different forms once I show you the sports and the hobbies. Okay. But again, if you do well flashcards, by all means, get these down on some flashcards. Um, but just to give you a, um, before we wrap this up, a couple of examples. I told you our focus here in this unit is going to be sports and, and hobbies, pastimes. Um, but again, fair and joy, you can use them for a lot of different other things. Uh, for example, the verb fair, you can talk about cooking, for example. Faire la cuisine in French. Faire la cuisine means to cook. Okay? Here are a couple of examples. For example, I often cook. I often cook. Moi, je fais souvent la cuisine. Do you also cook? Et toi, tu fais la cuisine? Et toi, tu fais la cuisine? Clara, my daughter, doesn't cook. Clara ne fait pas la cuisine. My wife and I, we sometimes cook together. Not often, but sometimes. Ma femme et moi, nous faisons parfois la cuisine ensemble. Encore. Moi, je fais souvent la cuisine. Et toi, tu fais la cuisine? Clara ne fait pas la cuisine. Ma femme et moi, nous faisons parfois la cuisine ensemble. Here's just a couple of model sentences. And before I wrap this up, I don't know if this was 100% clear, so I'm going to insist on it right now. Um, when I give you guys, for example, since to complete with a, a correct verb form, I just want to kind of maybe reiterate something, especially these uh, third person forms. I hope it's clear that often we can use a pronoun, il, elle, or il, elle, to refer to people, but we can also use a proper name or a common noun, okay? But the point is, if I'm referring to a third person, one individual person, I have to use a third person form of the verb, okay? It doesn't matter if I use the person's name. I say, um, refer to the person like the teacher, the student, um, the janitor, okay? Or if I use a pronoun. If I'm referring to one person, I use a third person singular form. Again, if I refer to two people, I can use a pronoun, il, el, I can name them, Bobby and Susie, okay, Billy and Peter, okay, my brothers, doesn't matter. I'm referring to more than one person, okay, doesn't matter how I name the person, I do the third person plural form of the verb. I'm not sure that's been 100% clear. To give you some examples, for example, I have a sister named Sarah. Who cooks? Easy enough, right? So again, I can refer to her. I can name her by name. Sarah fait la cuisine. Sarah fait la cuisine. And I told you she's my sister. So I can also say, Ma soeur fait la cuisine. Ma soeur fait la cuisine. Or I can just use a pronoun. Elle fait la cuisine. Sarah fait la cuisine. Ma soeur fait la cuisine. Elle fait la cuisine. It's three sense to say the same thing. The point is, use the same form of the verb. Okay? For example, my two kids are two and four years old. They're not old enough to cook yet. They don't cook. So again, I could say, Clara et Mathieu ne font pas la cuisine. Clara et Mathieu ne font pas la cuisine. Mes enfants ne font pas la cuisine. Yeah, my kids. Mes enfants ne font pas la cuisine. Ils ne font pas la cuisine. Point is, 
referring to two people, use the same form of the verb. Do I have to necessarily use a pronoun? I can. But the point is, the form of the verb I use has to correspond. Alright, that makes some sense. You can review those verbs on some flashcards. Um, we'll practice with this in class. Bon courage. Merci bien. Et au revoir.